Hey, this is Steve, the 6WZ. Let's build a radio transmitter, a signal source for testing antennas. I've built a few of these very small and light uh, clock oscillator sources that can be flown under my little Mavic Mini drone. This little unit uses an SMD oscillator and only weighs about 22 grams. As I just showed, I hang this unit under my drone. I just use a little uh, fishing clip and a swivel. I use really fine magnet wire, about 15 feet uh, of total wire, with the unit uh, kind of dangling in the middle, uh, seven and a half feet on either side. So the whole thing, if you can picture, is uh, like a vertical dipole. I put a light little nut on the bottom wire just to uh, keep it uh, angled downward. I've flown this guy past two kilometers out and uh, still had good signal. I've also used it as a ground source and uh, can easily achieve uh, two kilometers or more. That's well beyond a mile. I built a number of different renditions of this over the years, um, either point to point on a perf board or um, a similar PCB design, which I'm going to show in a minute using a uh, through pin uh, clock oscillator. Uh, you know, here's a, here's a, uh, older design, uh, gosh, you know, I just stuffed it in a box and this is the, one of the ones I've used out in the field. I'll just take that out and throw a wire over a tree and one laying on the ground and um, works great. Let me show you how I design these things and I'll share the circuit boards with you. These little transmitters use these readily available clock oscillators that uh, can be found uh, either in these old legacy eight dip, you know, through hole cans, or as a, a you know, more commonly nowadays as SMD surface mount uh, devices. Um, here's the data sheet for the CTS MX045 uh, units, and uh, ECS um, also uh, makes the dip units. Um, this is the 2100 series uh, data sheet. Um, and here's uh, the ECS uh, surface mount uh, data sheet. So navigate to your favorite parts supply house. You know, I use Mauser or Newark or DigiKey. You know, find your way to oscillators, standard clock oscillators. I've, you know, these guys have such great uh, parametric searches. I've already, you know, limited the supply voltage to, to what I want. But, you know, you'll see that, you know, heck, you can pick whatever frequency you want uh, to build one of these little guys. I've, in the past, you know, focused on 160 meters, though I've also picked up some that are uh, good for uh, the medium wave band for testing my antennas uh, on uh, the AM broadcast band. Anyway, you know, they're pretty affordable, you know, in and around 4 or $5 for a unit. You know, these devices are all very simple and all the same. Essentially, there are four pins on the device. Uh, one pin for the VCC, uh, usually five volt supply, uh, and one pin for ground, which is the other side of the supply, and output uh, pin for the output, uh, which has a set capacitance that you uh, should affix to ground. Uh, the fourth pin is an enable pin to uh, activate the device. I don't use that. So here's a schematic I built up um, in KiCad. Uh, very, very simple. I added an LED for indicate power. I also put a small little onboard uh, connector to uh, provide for a power on and off on the uh, small circuit board. Um, the filter capacitor, and I decided to include an output transformer, an isolated binocular core to stabilize the output and maybe somewhat sort of in a way match the um, small antenna. I actually played with and thought about, well, I did, I played with trying to make a tank circuit and actually tune this thing. In the end, I found it wasn't worth it, and I ended up with great performance from it, just uh, the, the way it's matched. Usually in and around two turns to five turns on the um, antenna side, knowing that the antenna is quite a bit higher impedance. You know, this is probably something you could play with to try and maximize the output and range. Here's a photo of the cores that I've used. Uh, I've used the larger uh, typical binocular core. These are the same types that I use for my receive antennas. But uh, when I start, decided to build the device for flying under my drone, I, I picked up these smaller 73 material uh, binocular cores. I'll include a parts list at the bottom of the video if, if you want to follow my lead and use similar uh, cores. When I started out, I just used point-to-point -point, uh, construction, you know, on some uh, some perf board, uh, especially easy to do with the uh, yeah, through hole uh, can uh, oscillators. Gosh, you know, I would actually recommend if you're just building one of these to use uh, casually, I would just do it this way. But what I did do is using KiCad, design some little circuit boards. 
hey, look, mostly just because I like to use KiCad and like to design circuit boards. And uh, this is the one that I designed up with a um, for one of the uh, uh, dual inline um, uh, cans. Uh, by the way, you can see the little uh, edge connector uh, for the power switch and, uh, and the LED. Uh, and then uh, a similar design, uh, slightly smaller using the surface mount device uh, here. You know, I think I use my frying pan to uh, reflow the solder paste with this um, surface mount unit. But I honestly think if you wanted to, you could probably get by, you know, with some flux and tinning the pads and uh, using a soldering iron, you could probably uh, get it on there. You'll also notice in the photo here, i am uh, got the circuit board mounted uh, uh, together with the three uh, AAA um, uh, lithium batteries. Um, what I discovered was lithium batteries actually not only are really good in terms of their service time, but they're also the lightest batteries you can get. And so that's why I decided to, to use, uh, use those units. You know, three of the batteries, it gives me uh, ample voltage. And it's, uh, I think I showed earlier in the video that this entire unit with the battery weighs about 22 grams. So how much power do we get out of these little guys? Well, I've hooked it up to my oscilloscope with um, with a 50 ohm uh, resistor uh, for terminated in 50 ohms. And uh, you'll see with the arrow here, I get about 1.04 volts uh, RMS. And of course, the basic ohms law of power is voltage squared divided by the resistivity. So um, I get about 0.02 watts or about 20 milliwatts from this uh, puppy. Um, by the way, it kind of generates some kind of wacky sort of, but not really square wave uh, out of this thing. Um, and this is the other device where I'm powering it with the power supply. So perhaps a little bit closer to the actual five volts versus the batteries. And in this case, I'm up to 1.4 volts RMS into the 50 ohms so that computes to be more about 40 milliwatts the fact is uh, as i think i mentioned earlier i mean i've taken i've flown this with my drone uh, beyond two kilometers well beyond a mile as well as used it as a ground source just throwing a wire over a tree and you know i've had uh, solid uh, signal on 160 meters um, uh, you know uh, being able to measure it with my sdr uh, to do my antenna testing I model all my antennas in Fornac 2. This is a zenith plot for a uh, on the ground uh, broadside end fire pair. And uh, on the right now is the azimuth plot of that same uh, antenna. I guess the question is, am I actually achieving that pattern in the field? That's why I like a signal source. In fact, this is a uh, consolidation or a overlay of uh, a number of plots for the same or for a number of antennas. The red, the red outline is a single beverage on the ground in blue is a broadside phased pair and the, the other higher RDF antennas are broadside end fire pairs. Uh, and in fact, this is the uh, similar sequence for the medium wave frequency for those same uh, antennas. But am I actually uh, seeing this in the field? Well, by using my signal source uh, flown by the drone, um, uh, I can, uh, as shown here, this is my, my location, I could fly the drone out one kilometer, and then basic trig can tell me uh, at what height above the location I need to fly it to achieve and measure uh, certain wave angles. So what I'll do is I'll fly the drone there and take a series of measurements, one for each antenna direction. I'll just switch through them all and record the uh, absolute gain uh, using one of my SDRs, usually the Perseus, and I can measure it accurately in dB. Then I'll fly to the uh, next station uh, and record those, uh, tabulate all those in an Excel spreadsheet and just uh, fly around to all eight stations. And then simply take that data and plot it up on a polar plot and see how it compares. Am I actually getting the, uh, the, the rejection and the pattern that I'm expecting? Hey guys, I hope you found that video kind of interesting and maybe encourage you to go build a signal source. You know, what I've discovered is testing antennas is very important and worthwhile. You know, sometimes what we see in the model and what we think we've built, uh, maybe it doesn't quite perform the way we imagined. One other thing, if you're planning to do this, uh, you know, make sure you use Google Earth. What a great thing. In fact, this is a view of my remote station on Google Earth and I can scroll out. I've, you know, the colored lines are the various, some of the beverages I have. And, 
you know, I can say, well, how about if I, you know, I can draw a line, say, what if I go out here along this county road and put my source there? You know, I can see, well, I'm out 1.95 kilometers or, you know, there I'm out, you know, almost one and a half miles, you know, or for that matter, you know, you, you know, as I've done before, you could say, draw a circle and say, okay, I'm going to take a bunch of measurements here. You know, even if you don't have a complex receive system, even um, whatever receive or even transmit antennas you have, building a source like this is handy to just, uh, you know, really evaluate. Evaluate it and see how it's performing. 73. This is Steve, V6WZ.